Hello. This video tutorial is a little statics review of a cantilever beam with an applied load at the end, as you see here. So we're calling this um, member CD. It's three meters long. We've got an applied force of nine kilonewtons over here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, pin connections versus fixed connections. So we know that this type of connection is called a fixed connection. There's no support here. So we usually would call that a free or unsupported end of the beam. And um, we have another type of connection that looks something like this. Just kind of drill a hole through the member and through that hole insert you know a solid cylinder of some type uh, usually like a bolt could be like a screw or a nail or something of that manner um, and as you know we call this the pin pin connection all right i've got a little model for you in the other tab and um, this is kind of how I teach this in static. So in terms of reviewing this idea for mechanics of materials, kind of go back to the way that I first presented. And I want you to imagine this picture that I've got here. So I've got kind of a cork board or something here on the bottom. I've got two rigid bodies, this one here at the top, I've got this one here at the bottom, and I've got some push pins or these green things. See how the push pins are going through? You know, think of this like as a little strip of cardboard, a little strip of foam core, something of that nature. All right, so what's gonna happen to this system up at the top? So I've got a rigid beam, I've got a point load applied here at the end, and I've got one push pin. This is essentially symbolizing the PIN pin connection over at the left end. And so hopefully what you're able to do is note that this system has no chance of staying in static equilibrium. It's going to be in motion. It's going to be in motion and it's going to rotate about that pin in this direction. Okay, so undeformed up here and then due to the applied force pivot rotate about that action if this was a machine part right um perhaps this rigid piece could be kind of whirling around and around and rotating around that push pin okay not in, in static equilibrium therefore not in the scope of our course mechanics and materials where we want our things to be in static equilibrium so that we can analyze stresses and strains and so what i've done in this second picture is I've, i'm sort of kind of simulating a fixed connection and i'm doing so with two push pins okay note that i've got one push pin kind of right next just kind of kissing that's that top surface there and my other push pin is kind of kissing the bottom surface there and they're not quite lined up uh, vertically Here's my, my axes are over here. So that would be the Y direction, kind of going up the screen right now. They're not quite lined up in Y, they're offset a little bit. That's gonna be important and you'll see why in a minute. But if I tried to do the same thing here and you know, does this beam have a tendency to rotate about this left support due to the applied force? It's not, right? Because the top push pin is applying a downwards reaction the bottom push pin is applying the upwards reaction. And that's essentially how we're generating a force couple over at the left end of the support that will prevent this rigid piece of cardboard from pivoting and rotating. Okay, so at a very high level, when you see pin connections, I want you to think about this image up at the top of the screen, a single push pin. When you think about fixed connections, there's a couple ways to think about this, but one way to visualize that is to think about two push pins, one top and one bottom, that prevent rotation. All right, let's go ahead and get into the solution there. So now that we know a little bit about how um, this system is working, we want to do a free body and then solve for reactions. So the problem asks us to construct a free body diagram. And to do that, what I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna do a little selection box and it's gonna look like this. I'll keep the measurement 
I'll keep plane C, but I am going to detach the body from the support at C. I'm going to do an edit, copy, merge. Not that one. I'll try that one more time. Okay, grab all this. Do, 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 do. Right there. Edit, copy, merged. Edit, paste and move that right over here. Okay, so what I've done is I've freed the body from the support. And in order to put this system in equilibrium, all I need to do is figure out my reactions that represent the action of this fixed support on the body. And so I'm thinking of all my two-dimensional equations of equilibrium, that sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, sum of fo uh, forces in the y direction equals zero, sum of moments about any z-axis is equal to zero. And I'll just kind of pop on our coordinate system x, y hanging out there in the corner. And by inspection, by inspection, we can kind of conclude that we don't need an x direction reaction over at C. And I know in statics, you may have been inclined to kind of write this out and you'd be like this is c sub x and then eventually conclude that it is equal to zero you're a little more sophisticated now so you don't need to show those zero vectors if it is uh, clear from inspection that they're equal to zero i'm gonna pop another layer on so i don't have to erase too much stuff. All right, let's go on to our next equation of equilibrium. So let's do a summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. I'm going to assume that my unknown reaction C sub y is upward. Okay, now by inspection, I know it has to be equal and opposite to the nine. So I do know, of course, right off the bat that, yep, it's going to be upward to place this beam in static equilibrium. But let's let the math bear it out. Here's how you set up that equation. Summation of forces y direction equals zero. First term C sub y. That one is upward positive. Next term, nine kilonewtons. That one is downward negative. Set that equal to zero for it to be in static equilibrium. And you'll conclude that C sub y is equal to nine kilonewtons, okay? And since we got a positive sign from this analysis, right? There's a default positive sign there. All that means is that our assumption was correct. We assumed that the vector pointed straight up in the positive y direction. And that positive sign tells us that our assumption was correct. All right, let's do our moment summation. And we know that a fixed connection has the capacity to develop a moment reaction. In fact, the reason why it exists is generally to develop that moment reaction. And in this case, keep our beam in static equilibrium. As we saw from the CAD model, if I did not have a fixed connection here, if I just had this pin connection, we could not attain static equilibrium. The reason why is because if I were to sum moments about any z-axis, including this dashed line over the green push pin, or a line parallel to that perhaps over here, I will never, ever, ever be able to place my body in static equilibrium. With the fixed support, I am going to assume a direction for the reaction. And I'll call that M sub C. M for moment or couple moment. C is telling me that that is a moment that happens to live in the plane that contains C. In other, in other words, it is the moment that connects the body to this supporting wall or connection or whatever, you know, the symbol is intended to illustrate in this particular problem. Um, it is connected firmly there. All right, let's run through the math. Summation of moments. And instead of using kind of a Cartesian coordinate direction Z, I am going to show the point through which there is an axis parallel to z, the point 
through which there is an axis parallel to z that I want to sum moments about. So this big orange dot right here, so this is the axis that I am using for the moment summation. It is coming out of the screen at you right now. If I were to go back to my 3D model, it's essentially this vertical line, this dash line coming out in the Z direction out of the plane. I know that lots of times in these 2D problems, we talk about like summing about a point, but what we're actually doing is summing moments about an axis every single time. All right, so I'm going to, for notation, I'll just do summation of moments about C is equal to zero. And how many terms am I going to have in this? Well, I've got three things in my system. I have got a nine kilonewton force here. I've got an equal and opposite nine kilonewton reaction force here. And I have an unknown reacting moment there. Note that this nine kilonewton force goes right through point C. It's coincident. Therefore, it doesn't have a moment arm. It is not going to be in play in our moment equilibrium equation. The other two terms are in play. The uh, sign convention we want to use is that counterclockwise is defined as positive. First term M sub C. M sub C is counterclockwise, and so I give that a positive sign. Okay, another way to think about this, if you're used to using the right hand rule for vectors, take your right hand, curl your fingers with M sub C, thumbs up positive. You follow that? Take your right hand, curl the fingers of your right hand with the rotation M sub C, thumbs up, positive. Okay, let's go over to the other one. So we've got nine kilonewtons. That tends to rotate the body clockwise about point C. So I can either put a, um, a negative sign there to think about a clockwise negative rotation about C, or I can use that right hand rule. Okay, so I put out my right hand, curl my fingers with that clockwise rotation, thumbs down negative. Using your right hand for moment signs is going to be super duper helpful later in the course in 3D. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and put that term. We need a force times a distance. And so we have nine kilonewtons. The moment arm is the perpendicular direct uh, perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force right there and the point about which we are summing. So I just need to use three meters for that moment arm, set that equal to zero. At this point, it's okay to go on autopilot. Nine times three, 27 kilonewton meters. Move it to the other side of the equation to conclude that the reacting moment at C has a magnitude of 27 kilonewtons times meters. It's positive because I moved it to the right side of the equation. The positive sign confirms the assumption that I made in my picture. And because so many signs in our class are so tricky, another way to write this would be 27 kilonewtons times meters and just use a curly arrow to indicate the sign definitively. That concludes this tutorial.